All right, so in this video, I'm going to do an ink swirl again, but this time it's gonna be all browns and white. Uh, I saw a cup on a group the other day that was absolutely gorgeous. I want one in my life, whether it's for myself or ready to sell. It was so beautiful. I was so happy that she shared that with the group. Um, so I have my epoxy mixed up already. I've got it um, 30 milliliters because I want to try and use the rest for something else. And you really don't want to go too uh, thin on the ink swirls because if you don't have enough epoxy, you don't get enough movement. I'm going to turn this on, give it a minute to stop screaming. I like it to turn that direction. I work better that direction. So I'm going to cover this. I personally like to start with a thin layer and then I add from there. I kind of poured that too thick. I like to pour it, I like to do it thin and then go thick. I feel like I can control my dry spots a little easier that way. Some people just slather it on here and that doesn't give me anxiety necessarily, but I just see so much wasted epoxy falling off, even though it's not shown in the videos or the pictures or whatnot, that is just where my mind goes instantly. And I just think, oh, I could make a keychain with that fall off. I wouldn't want it to be on the paper. I'm just gonna do that. I just opened a new pack of inks. I think it's called like cabin, kitchen cabinet or cabin cabinet or something. I have to look at the package and see. Just something I got on Amazon because I wanted the mixture of browns. Good grief, my paint is, this weather has got my paint all jacked up. I painted this this morning, so it's definitely had enough time to bond. I'll just have to make sure and have a dark color right there. Otherwise, it will end up with a dark spot right in the middle of the swirl. Anyways, um, they didn't have that kit at Hobby Lobby, and I was not going to be near either of the other two craft stores available to me anytime in the near future, so... I just went ahead and ordered it on Amazon and just went ahead and took the plunge. But I'm looking forward to it because I really only had one brown and it was the same brown that I used on the wood green. You can kind of see them sitting here over here waiting in the wings. I also ordered a new white, just the same brand I had been using. It's like ridiculously pigmented. It's great. So you want this on here thick enough that it is already kind of moving, but not so thick that it's falling off. Which is kind of hard to do. It's that perfect balance. And I'm gonna let this settle for just a minute. Oh, dang it, it dripped. I'm gonna let it kind of flatten out a bit. As I watch for dry spots or any patches that don't really seem like they have much epoxy. That's going to be a problem. I foresee that being a problem. I don't know why that is so badly chipping off. I'm going to try and avoid touching that spot. So I have this a little thicker now. Got it plenty thick in the middle. Make sure and give attention to those edges here and the rim here. It's really easy for the epoxy to pull away from that and just leave you with some bareness, if that's a word. So I'm gonna set this aside. Hopefully it doesn't go bad like I accidentally let it do yesterday. I wasted like 20 something mLs because it took too long to do my ombre. So I'm gonna use a good bit of this. It's the Bria Reese, I guess is what that says. Uh, it's from the hobby section at Hobby Lobby. It's not by the inks, but I'm just going to go kind of all over. This will be the main kind of
color. Good grief, that came out fast. Um, this is going to be the main color of the cup. And again, I've not done the type of color combo that was in that picture. I'm just hoping for the best. And don't forget to drop where it'll kind of fall around the edge there. Okay, so that's a good amount right there. I want to leave that open in case I need it again later. So next I'm going to do caramel. I have a medium. The ginger is the lightest of all the colors. I don't know if I'm going to use very much of it. But we're going to see what it looks like. It's weird. I have like some air bubbles or something. And don't be shy of dropping other colors into something you've already dropped. Kind of breaks up that amoeba looking shape. So weird to me when a drop literally just pulls up and drops off of there. Okay, I don't want a ton ton of this one. It's not quite as dark as I want it to be. Um, so we are going to do latte next. I'm going to drop it make sure it's the color I think it is because I'm pretty sure I mixed up ginger and um, this last one, caramel. Pretty sure caramel is the lightest one and I really wasn't intending on using the lighter one. This is not much different at all. Oh my goodness, it looks like I'm using the same ink. Pointless. So we're going to put the lid on that one because we don't need any more of that one. And let's see if ginger is the one I need. Yep, ginger is the darker one. I had it backwards. That's all right. Just makes me think of a little bit of a light roast. So I'm going to see if I can't kind of overpower all those other lighter ones. Kind of throughout. I think I'm going to go a little darker with this cut than what I'm getting right now. And I've completely neglected the bottom again. Whoopsie. Yeah, my bottom is pretty much completely covered because that other brown came out so fast. I'm certain that I'm done with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one aside as well. I'm going to see if I can't take over some of these spots here. You don't have to fill in every single space of white. Um, it's a weird little... That one had a weird air bubble when I dropped the ink the first time. I don't know what was up with that. So that's all I'm going to do color wise right now. I'm going to go ahead and throw in a little white and then we're going to pick it up and move it like we've done in the other ones. I don't want to like overdo it on the white. I just kind of want it to look like swirled creamer. Kind of break up some of these areas. Okay, one more, uh, one more. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do there. Oh, let's give one to the bottom here, just so we end up with a swirl down there. I swirled about halfway down. So now we are going to take this off the turner. Make sure you're working over a surface that is protected because this action right here we're literally taking this off of here this is going to pull up right here on the lip and possibly fall off so we're going to flip it upside down right side up let it swirl one way see how that's already turned into like a light tan that's what makes it look like the creamer in my opinion I wish it was a little hotter in here. That'd be so perfect. 
You can kind of see all of that is starting to solidify there. We're going to go back down. I think we're going to need some more brown. It's not really going to cover quite like we need, so let's go ahead and put it back on here. Some of those other colors are going to, see that, that darker or that flat spot was it's almost like the epoxy separated right there. Oh, good gravy. <laughs> I haven't had a full bottle of brown in a really long time and I keep forgetting how easily it comes out. Kind of really going to town with it, man. It's double dripping and yeah, not not good. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more white because I've kind of let that take over a bit. Pretty much just going to put them back where I had them. Kind of give that layered effect. Another thing too that will allow a little bit more movement is a heat gun. Um, some people use an actual heat gun. I use this embossing gun from Joann's. It's just literally a cheapie. It's covered in epoxy and ink. But I'm going to blast it really quick, so you might want to turn down your volume for a second if you um, have sensitive ears. Normally, I... Uh, I would have my mask on while I'm doing this just for safety's sake because of the, just the fact that epoxy is toxic until cured. So it can really be bad if you are allergic. go ahead and drop a little bit more ginger when that really white spot comes around. So I've had times before where I had to add epoxy. This is one of those times I, I have these bare spots. So of course that's going to mess up kind of the flow that I had going. But that's okay because we're going to recover that in just a minute. Just for some reason it gets these bare spots and it just... I don't know why it does that. It shouldn't do that, but I guess certain inks it's a little bit worse than others. Adding this epoxy too, that is not pretty, but that's going to go away in a little bit. Adding this epoxy definitely also gives us the ability for more movement. In the worst case, I'll print more or mix more for my keychains later. I'm gonna leave that at that. I do want just a teensy bit more brown. I know I keep adding a lot of brown, but I just went a little too crazy with that color that wasn't the color I wanted. I should have caught it caught my mistake earlier, but I didn't. That's all right. I'm going to recovery mode. So I'm going to let that turn for just a minute. And then once that really big yellowish spot comes around, I'm going to go ahead and pepper it with a little bit more. did see a spot that needed some more epoxy too, so we're going to go ahead and do that as well. There is such thing as too much epoxy, I'm sure. It would literally have to be falling off your cup. So these bare spots that I'm getting, I'm just going to touch them, kind of break up that barrier that's there for whatever reason had to do this before and it actually gave me a really cool result in the end. I love that. That won't stay like that though. I 
I have another cup that I did that I had to do a lot of that dabbing method and it turned out amazingly cool. I was really happy with it. Even though I thought for a moment it was gonna be a total fail. Okay, that's all the touching I'm gonna do for now. I'm gonna let that kinda do its thing for just a minute. Watch for some more. Oh, there's another bald spot. I'm gonna watch for any more because if you have a bald spot, so to speak, it will affect your overall, you'll have like a dry area and, and it just won't attach. Like the epoxy won't run over it. I don't understand why it does that, but it does. So that has pretty much addressed all of those dry spots. I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to cover as much of the yellow as possible. So that's all for that particular part of it. No more inks, I don't think. So this has got good movement this way. So we're going to take it off and give it some movement vertically. So off with that. Keep your eye on this right here because gravity, whatever is the lowest, is what's going to fall. And just before it falls, you slide it, tilt it back the other direction. You can kind of see it slowly falling. As I'm doing that, I like to turn it just a little bit. Yeah, I really wish I wouldn't have had so much yellow. There's the bottom for you if you care this area right here it's really easy for that to get neglected on accident just because we tend to flip it right before oh, it's dripping so that's what you got to watch out for that right there just dripped right over because I wasn't watching so it's easy for that to get neglected on accident so we're just going to rotate it there's a tutorial method called the Alicia method, where she actually gets her epoxy moving and most of her color swirls. She calls them storms. And it, she does hers like this doo, 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 and drops it here so that it falls. And then you get a long drawn swirl that way. I like mine kind of dropped on most of the time. Sometimes I do it the other way. I'm definitely not the creator of this uh, technique of taking it off. Lots of people do that. Keep an eye on that rim too. Sometimes you gotta just kinda touch it up yourself because it's so easy for it to separate right there. Try not to let it drain or drip into the cup though. That's just a hot mess that you don't wanna have to deal with. Yeah, so that's about it. Make sure whatever you have your cup on, it's secure. I have shelf liner on there and this is crammed in there. The last thing you want is for this thing to fall off. This would be so pretty with um, gold. Little gold drizzles in there. But then it wouldn't look as much like coffee. I don't know if I would drink my coffee with a ton of glitter in it. I'd drink it if it had a little bit. I've been known to eat a little bit of glitter because, you know, it's everywhere. It's the devil. I'm just going to do one little drop right there. I just felt like that spot was a little bare as far as having any light on it. I put it on the bottom so that everything kind of pools on it. Look how cool that is. Great. I love it. We have a few little air bubbles on here. It's not so bad. But we're going to give this some attention again. A little up and down movement. I love that. 
Golly, this might be my next cup. I need another cup like a hole in my head. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that spot with some heat. this tilted downward too much and that was started to pool and all that kind of pinching together right there I definitely did more white than I should have for the look I was going for but I really like how it's turning out so I'm not gonna complain I originally was gonna do a tutorial on a fire cup and then I remembered that these inks came Saturday and I had not even opened them yet so I'm just tilting it back down to the bottom. It's kind of weird how that has spotted up right there. That area that I just heated, it definitely took a nose dive whenever I tilted that. I've seen a couple of ink swirls done over a glitter base or a glitter thrown in the top coat. I've done a couple over a glitter base. One of them was a failed color combo. I did this really bright pink over a black base, hoping that it would just give it a different look. And it did. It just wasn't the look I wanted. I'm going to do my best to not get any glitter on this one. I'm not so sure how successful that's going to end up being. I feel like there's glitter in every single cup, whether it's intended or not. So that has got beautiful movement there. I think I'm, oh, there's a piece of glitter. I knew it would happen. I even put on fresh gloves and everything. This is what I don't like. I wish that wasn't kind of separated, so I'm going to blast it a bit. So I just wanted it to have a little bit more movement. It kind of breaks apart that feathery look. other spot just took that nosedive. That is not what I wanted for that, but that's all right. So I'm going to put this back on the turner and I'm going to hit it with a little heat just so that we can take care of this spot and then finish up giving this a little of attention or a little attention. And then um, we're going to let it turn. I'll set the timer for, I got ink epoxy all over that. It looks really disgusting. So I'm going to set the timer on the turner for probably about four hours. This is really thick. My arm fell out of my turner last night. So I ended up with two cups that just had a line of nipples on them that I had to sand off. And I ended up not doing a very smart thing. I was cutting them with that blade and sliced that finger. I didn't even know it. It was so fast and so sharp. But I, I'm going to hit this with a little bit of heat. And then I'll show a final product in just a little bit. This has been turning for a few minutes. I don't really see any movement, so the end result is probably going to look a lot like this. I'm totally fine with that. I like it. It is nowhere near what I was going for, but I still like it. And I ended up just now finding the brown that I wanted to use in another package that I had not opened. Um, so go figure. So I'll end up doing another one of these, maybe not a tutorial, because it'll be the same thing, just different colors. Um, but I like it. It'll definitely be eye-catching and somebody will like it. So I'll either sell it at that craft show or in my vendor space in that new uh, thing I just started. So anyways, if you have any questions, give me a comment. If you like the video, if you'll thumbs up it, that helps me out a lot. 
And above all, if you'll subscribe, that would help me out tremendously I'm trying to build my channel and I will gladly take any kind of support that I can get. So if you have any questions, like I said, just drop it in the comments and I will do my best to get to it. Have a good one. Thought I'd add this at the end here. It's been spinning for about 20 or 30 minutes and not really changing anymore. So this is pretty much our final product.